Hey, welcome back to another UNC Tar Heels football recruiting podcast here on TarHeelIllustrated.com. And if you are watching us on our YouTube channel, Tar Heel Illustrated, I'm THI publisher Andrew Jones, and joining me is our director of football recruiting, our very own Miss Dina King. And Dean and I were at the Mac Brown Showtime Camp at the UNC Football Complex on Saturday night. About 70 plus kids invited kids. It was an invite only camp participated, most of whom are in the class of 2023. We've run two podcasts already. We hit on the 22 kids. Uh, and then yesterday we unveiled our podcast talking about the four defensive campers from the class of 2023. Now we're going to hit on offense. More kids to talk about because there were about twice as many kids that are offensive players that are at least focused on offense that were there as opposed to defensive ones. So seven 2023 prospects in this video, Dana. So let's go jump right into it. The one that everybody wants to hear about the most, I think the kid that going in, people, Carolina fans were most interested to know if A, he was going to be there, B, if he was going to participate. Tad Hudson, the quarterback from uh, Huff High School down there in Cornelius, North Carolina. Really good arm, big kid, uh, really big arm. I mean, he can throw the ball. Uh, he, has, he, he He's able to make all the throws. Looks like a kid, sort of a – I could see him standing back in the pocket, just kind of going through his progression, and whatever throw he's got to make, the ball's going to get there. Yeah, he's uh, he's been on Carolina's radar for, for a while. Um, Carolina was in on him early, you know, uh, being in the Charlotte. And, he, you know, Charlotte produces just oozing with talent, and he's on a Huff team that – just oozes with college prospects. I believe right now they're they're the top school in the state in uh, producing D1 football players. You know, Mallard Creek is very good as well. Uh, Advance, which is now Chambers, they're they're doing well. So you're playing football in Charlotte and and that area. So the the talent is just really great, and he's a He's well known. Um, uh, Huff uh, had one of the better teams in the state. They uh, they beat Vance slash Chambers uh, in the regular season, but uh, Vance got revenge on them in the the playoffs and went on and, and won a state championship. But Tad, you know Carolina, you know Coach Longo was really likes what what Tad does. Uh, he's a uh, like you said a big kid. Uh, don't think he's the uh, the run type guy that you know maybe uh, Jacoby is, and you know Sam has really improved on his running. And Drake May, you know he uh, Drake, Drake can run the ball if he wants to. I mean, I don't he's think he's got he, a stride and he's quick. We saw him a lot. He in didn't spring. have to a lot at Myers Park, but he would run the ball. Tad, he, I mean, he he's a he's tall and he can stand in the pocket and he's strong and everything and that's what I watched of him in the uh, in the in the camp you know he's got a great arm you know I mean he, he's he's his arm strength is just really great so he's a uh, he's up there with uh, you know 23 quarterbacks are they they've got a lot of targets you know someone asked on the message board uh, was he their top target? Well, of course, Arch Manning is everybody's top target. You know, who wouldn't, you know, that name? But Tad and uh, Dylan Lonegren from out of, out of Georgia, those two guys are, are pretty big targets for UNC. Of course, Lonegren is a, a baseball player, too. So, and Tad being the home, home state kid, you know, there, there may be some uh, – you know, hometown, uh, uh, play for the home team, you know. Who else is pursuing him hard? And do you have a, a feel yet for maybe this group of schools he might be leaning a little bit more toward? You know, I, I've, uh, I think he, you know, Tennessee, you know, your, your usual schools that are your area schools, South Carolina, you know, uh, Virginia Tech. So uh, no Clemson, <laughs> but Clemson's going to sign a five-star, 
Well, you know, of course, Tad has not been ranked just yet. You know, he, he could be a four-star quarterback. We yeah, have to he wait will to be. The, the 23s, only a handful have been ranked yeah. so far. We have to wait They're see, still in the evaluating process because yeah, they yeah. haven't seen these kids in so long. But, you know, the, the usual suspects around the area um, are looking at him uh, pretty good. So, But I, I think Carolina is in good shape with him. I mean, since – They've built a relationship with him uh, pretty much when he started getting getting offers and his recruitment started heating up. Three of the seven kids we're going to talk about in this podcast are offensive linemen. Joshua Miller will be the first one that we'll hit on. I don't know a whole lot about Joshua Miller. You were telling, you were feeling, we were sitting down for a while Saturday night and you were filling me in some of these kids and you were talking about him. In fact, you actually talked about him. Before I even left my house, you were there. You were sending me some text messages. And and so uh, tell everybody else who may not know that much about Joshua Miller what he's all about and what you like about him. Well, he, he's a big kid, too. And he's a teammate of Travion Green. And with them two guys, I, I can see why Life Academy probably had a really good team. They All they'd have to do is run behind those two youngins because, I, I mean, I – I, when I first got there, I got to see a lot of the kids take their their photo shoots, and I was like, "Good gracious!" And in my my Dina Twain Twain, there's some big youngins in here. <laughs> but yeah, he's hold a, on. Full, full disclosure, you actually posted that on our thread or our show thread on the message board, uh-huh. and it got like forty thousand likes on there too. Because because <laughs> when people read that, they're 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 imagining your Twain saying it. Yeah, and um, so you know when they put them, when they when they put them pads on, it just makes them. I mean, they just look like gladiators, just huge gladiators, and 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 it's just fun watching the kids get those pictures made and the poses that they do, and some of the poses they that we've seen on on social media, and it, and we know that's a, just one of the highlights of the trip is getting their their pictures made in, in the uniforms and everything. But back to Joshua, I mean, he's a, you know, Virginia kid. So, uh, you know, it, 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 it's a common, common thing, you know, Max wanting to get as many Virginia kids as he can as well as of course, don't leave out the, the home state kids, but, you know, with him uh, being a teammate with Travion, I'm sure he's, you know, wanting to see what UNC is about, and he got to come down and had a had a great camp, and uh, uh, we'll see where it where it leads. I mean, it may lead to an offer. As I've been peeling away the layers, the class of 2023, preparing for us to really launch full throttle into covering the class of 23, didn't take long to see the name Monroe Freeling, and then here in the last couple of days. When Roe Freeling's name has popped up, do a little bit of reading about where he's been, who was interested in him. Uh, this is a name that Carolina fans need to you know, get to know because this is a big time prospect and he might get become a bigger prospect as we move into the summer and get into the fall. From South Carolina, uh, from Oceanside Collegiate down towards Charleston, uh, used to be coach, a familiar name. Um, some may know Chad Greer used to be the, the head coach down there and got got that program really rolling. And they've had some really good players that have come through, you know, since, you know, Chad started it. And, of course, Chad come up and is coaching at Providence Day now, the dad of Will Greer uh, from West Virginia and the Panthers and everything. So Monroe Freeling, he got an offer from UNC. And then started getting offers from everywhere. Uh, being a South Carolina kid, uh, Clemson and South Carolina's all over him. Uh, Clemson, he's he's uh, been there, uh, one of their top offensive line targets. So uh, <laughs> it, it, it may be a common theme to to, to see these these Carolina Clemson battles for some of these kids. I mean, uh, he at first shot of coming in and meeting coach Searles and coach Brown and seeing the facilities. And 
he's someone that uh, uh, we hope to uh, hear from. I believe Adam uh, got to speak to him after his uh, camp experience. And I'm anxious to hear what Monroe says about his uh, UNC uh, visit and camp experience. One of my favorite players, I identified him quickly. And I, I had some fun with you because the, the last name Concepcion, if you're a baseball guy like me, you think of Dave Concepcion. Or if you're a real super baseball guy, you think of Onyx Concepcion, played for the Royals back in the 80s. Uh, Kevin Concepcion, man alive. Uh, I told you, I went over to you. I went over to you every once in a while to share with my thoughts because they were such good thoughts. And I wanted you to hear them uh, right then and there. And I sat down next to you and I said, uh, this kid looks like a, like a young Josh Downs. He's kind of got that going on. And I'm not saying he's going to be as good as Josh Downs or anything like that. It's just the mannerisms and speed, kind of the way he plays. I really, really like watching him. I'm not the big Italian about evaluator that coaches are or Adam is or that you are in the sense of, of the recruitment. But, you know, this kid popped, he popped out to me big time. And when he ran his routes in the competitive portion of camp, at least when I was watching, you know, he beat this guy every time. Uh, he, he just – Really, really an impressive kid who I think Carolina fans also need to keep an eye on this young man. He was one of, the, one of my standouts from the camp from Friday. I mean, excuse me, Saturday, uh, the, uh, the big camps that they, the, that they had last weekend. He was one of the guys that I kept, you know, kept, you know, Concepcion, you, you said it, the name. Uh, you know, he, he, he can't miss him. He has a poofy kind of hair do that, you know, stands out. And, I mean, I, I when, when he came in to uh, the Showtime camp, uh, I knew who it was. You know, it's, uh, a lot of these faces we've, we've not seen. And uh, like I've said in another podcast, you know, some of these kids – can change so much uh, since we've not seen them face to face and they might have some old photos in the database and, and even some kids come in with different hairstyles. I've, I've seen a kid come in and then the next time I see him may have some dreads and I don't even, I can't, I don't know who he is and stuff. So uh, it, it's kind of, it's kind of fun to, to, I mean, well, it's not fun trying to, to find out who these kids are sometimes, but I knew who Kevin Concepcion is. He's uh, one of the top kids that played on that Vance team, now Chambers, you know, wide receiver. And, you know, he, he, like you said, got deceptive fast speed and he makes plays and, you know, he, he's, he's got a few offers. I think Maryland, has offered him, and I mean, he's somebody to to keep your eye on because I mean, sure. you can't. I mean, he's he's not one of the taller receivers, but you don't want all six three or six four receivers. You got to have some of the 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 smaller, quick guys, kind of like the Daz and the Josh Downs, to uh, uh, mix in with with your bigger wide receivers the third offensive lineman we're going to discuss uh, in this group is connor drake someone i didn't know a lot about uh looking at him again it's really interesting that even in an invitation only camp when all the kids pretty good and they're probably studs at their high schools all of them are studs at their high schools uh some kids just you look at them and say yeah that makes sense i understand why all these different schools are interested in Connor Drake. I didn't see him do a lot of stuff at the camp, but looking at him, you can see that. Yeah. I could see why guys like that are interested in this kid. They can kind of envision down the road when he gets his body in gear and he's around college, a training, a college training program with the food and with the weights and the conditioning, everything else where he'll totally look the part in a couple of years. Well, he looks the part now because yeah, like big time him, the part. if you'd have put him in the group with, with, uh, I think, um, as was Josh Azudu, was he helping out in the camp? Yeah, he was. Some of them, some of the couple offenses. Of, a couple of the McKeith was there. Well, was yeah. Now, now Connor <laughs> Drake, you know, he's got the beard. He looks like, he looks like one of your, your old time, time, 
uh, Washington quote football team. You know they're they're uh, the hogs. The hogs. How know. about a bearded? Okay, I'm really dating myself here. It's the old yeah. times of bigness. Most of the rest of people are like, "What the heck's AJ talking about?" A young bearded Conrad Dover. How about that? Yeah, he come by and I was like. Yeah, I mean, I, if he did, if he was decked out in Carolina things, I would have thought he was one of the the Carolina because he he doesn't look like a a a, a high school junior going. But in. imagine, but look at him and imagine what he's going to look like in a few years. Yeah, that'd be so, huge, um, impressive. But, you know, he uh, he's a kid that that came to the camp uh, last weekend and did really well. Uh, you know, we we said that Mac not only the not only was the Carolina staff there, but they had like nine to ten other staffs there: Old Dominion, Charlotte, Marshall, Hampton, Howard, uh, uh, Fordham, uh, just just a lot of a lot of teams. North Carolina Central, and and he came away with an offer out after you know doing really good in these camps. Uh, Old Dominion offered him so. All it takes is that one offer, one school offers, and then you, you sort to see some other schools start to to offer. And so, I mean, he's a kid from uh, Providence down in Charlotte. And uh, you, you, like I mentioned before in the podcast, Charlotte is loaded in talent. And uh, Connor, he definitely looks like he uh, can definitely play at the, the next level. And we'll have to keep an eye out on him. For a while Saturday night, we don't have rosters. So we're just trying to figure out who all these kids are. And a little more challenging this year, as you alluded to earlier, because for 15 months, we couldn't see any of them in person for the most part. Some you were able to see last summer on some of the local kids, but not most. We were trying to figure out who 33 was for a while. And we eventually figured out who he was as, and then he tweeted a little while after the uh, camp session ended that he got an offer. That's Chris Colmer, a wide receiver, someone uh, that you have already spoken to since he got the offer and that we'll be having to run some stuff on. And we're, we're still looking. Jacob and Kevin are looking through their footage that they shot to see if we could throw together an ISO video on him. And by the way, we have ISO videos on a lot of these kids. Dad Hudson, I know we have one on. I'm thinking that there's one on Kevin Concepcion. There's a couple Jacob hasn't yet put together, so I'm not sure all the ones he has, but we're hoping we have enough for a Chris Culliver offer. So tell us about Chris Culliver. He got an offer from Carolina. He looked really good the other night. When I saw the tweet, I'm like, yeah, well, that makes sense. He figured he probably already did have an offer, even though I knew going in he didn't. He said he's got a few offers, Appalachian, Virginia Tech. Uh, he's from Maiden. And that's in the uh, the Hickory uh, suburbs, uh, Hickory metro area that I spoke to earlier. And Hickory a, metro a, area, okay. <laughs> a, a good football program, Maiden, is one of the is uh, got one of the big monikers in in high school football, in North Carolina, biggest little football town in North Carolina. Uh, they that's love right. their Blue Devils there, so. Uh, but yeah, he uh, I, I spoke to him and uh, you know it, it's when a kid gets an offer from his home state, you, you can kind of feel that it's special. And I think this is this offer from UNC is really special to him. Um, and uh, I'll have my article up. We'll we'll run it pretty soon. Not sure that's up to the boss man. Well, it could it so, could have already run by the time we run this podcast. Yeah. But uh, he he's had nothing but positive things and 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 just you know that that shows you what a good camp performance can do because I mean he didn't have he had did have an offer and and put in a good performance against quality competition and it oh, yeah. that offer at that offer was really fast because I even asked him how the offer occurred and. He went into detail about that. You know, it was uh, pretty quick. And uh, he was, uh, him and his uh, folks that was with him was with Coach Brown a lot too. So uh, pretty special to see offers go out. I know we've 
we've seen offers go out and we've seen commitments happen at pretty special moment in these kids life when when they get an offer that they really really want and maybe a maybe a dream offer I'm sure I'm sure some Carolina fans are probably wondering this but can a blue double become a Tar Heel yeah yeah I think uh I had some really good friends that were uh, lived in Maiden, uh, and Mooresville. They're the Blue Devils too. Brevard, one of the one of the big time uh, Carolina football player. I believe his name was Mitch White. Wasn't he a Brevard Blue Devil? Yeah, yeah. So uh, yeah. yeah, I mean in Red Devils, a <laughs> uh, lot a lot of a lot of people can. I guess oh, yeah. just just having some fun there. Yeah, I really I enjoyed know, watching I mean, him. I'm getting off. And he was another it. one. And he was another one who spent time with uh, Mac and and after the camp. And obviously, maybe that's when the offer occurred. We don't really know for sure. I, you might know actually. I don't really know for sure yet when the offer occurred. But he was clearly when he left. I remember Kevin said something about him. Adam said something about him. And um, I, I think Kevin actually went over to get his name. And I said, go get 30, go find out who 33 is. Cause we were struggling for the longest time to figure out who it was. And I think Kevin got his name, but Adam already had his yeah, name. Yeah, because he come back and said, you know, there's another Chris Culver that plays in the NFL. So yeah, yeah. The, yeah. That's, Kevin that's, knows all that stuff. Yeah. <laughs> the last team you want to talk about, he goes to Huff High School running back JT Smith. Doesn't have an offer, but it, he showed out pretty well Saturday night. And he's a kid that, you know, we're looking at 23. That net in 23 is going to be much, much bigger than the net in 22. So what can you tell everybody about J.T. Smith? He was a – he's a kid that played in the uh, the camp the week before, the, the weekend before. It feels like I've been in Chapel Hill uh, – A lot. A, a lot. <laughs> but he – you know, like, like with Hudson's, he's Hudson's teammate. Um Huff, they they just they just constantly produce these kids, uh, D1 kids and everything. And JT Smith, uh, I I've seen his uh his videos and some watched him in action, and he's a he's a he's going to be a really good player for Huff. And um, you know, who knows? With a full class, you you got more options and. He's definitely a running back that Mac and them will be uh, Coach Porter and Natron and, and all the running backs guys they'll be keeping tabs on. When I went over to watch the running backs for a while to go find out who the guy in the green shorts was, and I learned it was Makai Hughes, a class of 22 kid. We've done some stuff on him already. The other kid in that running back group that jumped out was JT Smith. He just looks like a kid that's headed toward a power five at some point, you know, down the road when he, when he gets to college. And some kids, not all skill position players, sometimes it's kind of hard to distinguish because of the way they're built. You just have to watch them perform. And then some, you watch them perform and you just see how they're built. And they've got power five written all over them. To me, JT Smith looks like he's got power five written all over him. He's got, I mean, JT, it sounds like a, Sounds like a, a good running back name and, yeah, and everything. Sure. So, um, but overall, I mean, you know, we could talk for days for all these camps. It was just glad to get out and see these kids and uh, see them have fun and see the coaches and, you know, intermingle with the coaches. I mean, this is the first week I've seen the coaches for me. You know, you went to games, but you, you didn't. You know, everything's done with Zoom and everything. Yeah. But I hadn't, I hadn't had a face-to-face, -face, you know, hand bump to Coach Brown in since uh, probably Washington D.C. at the Military Bowl. <laughs> probably, yeah. It's been a but, while. I mean, yeah, it's it things, was... and it's just, it's just fun to to get out and be able to get and the environment again, it, it was, it was truly uh, good to do that. What's also fun if you're a diehard Carolina fan is to sign up and become a member of our community at Tar Heel Illustrated. That way you get all this stuff. We're just doing snapshots 
on a podcast right now, but you can get everything that we important. Dina's grinding big time. She's woefully underpaid this month. I can assure you of that. She's grinding like crazy because there's so much happening on the recruiting trail for her for basketball and for da- or football and for David Sis for basketball. You can sign up right now, become a member of THI, get access to all this stuff, all these interviews, everything else, and it's free until August 10th. So if you want to know what Chris Culver had to say, if you want to know what some of these other kids had to say, you got to sign up, become a member. It's free until August 10th, which actually takes you almost a full week in the start of fall camp, and not everything we report from there is free content. A lot of it's premium content. So you can get access to Aldina stuff, all David stuff, everything else we do. It is free until August 10th. So go ahead and sign up right now and you'll be on top of everything. You can be the expert at the water cooler or online when you go on message boards or other boards or Facebook groups. Some of the Facebook groups we've seen could use some subscribers going out there and parlaying some of the information. So hop on board right now and you can be an expert like Dina is. Dina, great stuff. We've done three podcasts. What we saw from Showtime camp, including the stand-up that we did afterward inside the practice facility. We did something on the 22 kids. You can scroll down our YouTube channel and find that. We also did something on the 23 defensive kids. We ran that on Tuesday. And then, of course, today, we do the offensive kids from the class of 2023. Keep it on these folks, uh, these players, folks, because these are kids, some of whom could potentially be future targets. So you want to be able to follow their track wherever they go, but certainly if they end up popping for Mac Brown and the heels. She's Dana King. I'm Andrew Jones. Thanks for stopping by.